OK, so let's look at the introduction to telecommunications. Uh, the module number is CSN 08704. Uh, so what you should find, there's an associated website with all the required links on it. OK, so this is really just an introduction and we're going to explain some of the, the key concepts that we're, that we're going to look at uh, as part of this. But overall, we're going to have a look at data, audio, video and images and really see how they're all fused together to give us our t telecommunications or our communications infrastructure. OK, so let's do a little bit of history uh, before we start. So communications has really went through several major phases. There was a foundation laid down by uh, the key uh, founding fathers of electrical engineering, Coulomb, Ohm, Faraday, Gauss and Maxwell. And they really uh, uh, defined the, the foundation around the electrical principles that, that we use now. Next, there was the electronics uh, revolution that happened in the 60s, uh, which went through the phases of uh, transist uh, integrating transistors, integrated circuits. And then we've moved on to a uh, computer revolution, where we see that most things are becoming digitized and are available in a, in a digital format rather than our existing analog methods. And now we have modern communications, such as satellite communications, local area networks, digital networks, and so on. OK, so the phases we went through is to go through automated telephone switching, and then we looked at uh, radio transmission on to the transcontinental cables that, that went between countries. Satellites uh, came along and we could actually send uh, our communications by bouncing the signals off satellites onto digital transmission and coding. And then we see now fibre optic communications uh, are used in a lot of high uh, rate transmissions. And now finally uh, we have the internet which really integrates uh, our data. So let's look at some core principles that we see within our and within telecommunications. Two core principles that, uh, that we see uh, relate to the speed that a human could actually uh, type. And th this was typically about seven, seven and a half characters a second. And we often use eight bits per character that's sent. So if we send an A, it's represented by eight bits. So the most basic level that, that we had was to take these seven and a half characters per second multiply it by 8 bits and we get 60 bits per second. So 60 bits per second was really the standard uh, rate for text to be transmitted. Then we've multiplied that up 120 bits per second to 40 uh, and so on. In the telephone network, uh, the most basic form of sampling of audio, we'll be covering that later in, in the module, but is to take each sample with 8 bits and that sampled 8,000 times per second. As we'll find, we sample at twice the highest frequency of the signal, and we get a base rate of 64 kilobits, or 64,000 bits per second. And this tends to be uh, the core transmission speed on many telecommunications networks for transmitting audio. So we get lots of variations within our communication system. So we can have contentious networks uh, where uh, our nodes must contend to get access to the, to the bandwidth or to the network. Or we can have bandwidth sharing or even re reserved bandwidth where we can make sure that each node gets a certain amount of bandwidth. So the bandwidth is the amount of data that can be transmitted across our communication channel. We can have a virtual path uh, between two nodes, so that might go through switching nodes uh, to be able to get to the end destination. Or in some cases, we can have a dedicated line. Along with that, we might also have what's called a datagram. With a datagram, that's that the data is routed across the network. Then we can have different addressing schemes. We can have a global addressing scheme, like we have with the IPv4 uh, infrastructure on the internet. It can be localized if we need it and even there can be no addressing involved too. 
So the three core uh, mechanisms that we use to be able to communicate is a simplex communication. And with simplex, uh, between our nodes, we only get one-way communication. So we'll go from A to B. With half duplex, then one uh, of the machines can talk at one time, which is A to B, and then stop, and then B can talk to A. And this is known as, as uh, half duplex. So there needs to be some handshaking, some signaling in there that allows A to stop transmitting before B does. And then, and more commonly, we get full duplex communications where A and B can talk at the same time. Then, another key concept that we have is whether our data is serial communications. Serial communications is one bit per time, at, at a time. Where parallel communications is where we can send more than one bit at a time. So this is typical when we have a bus system, such as within a within a PC. Uh, we have our hard disk, our CPU, and so on are connected through a parallel bus, typically 32 or 64 bits. But more commonly, to save uh, connections, to save lines, in communication systems we have one line, and this the bits are sent in serial, one after each other. So obviously this method will be faster because we can send more bits at any given time uh, than we can with serial. Also with serial we need some way to identify the start of our communications and obviously the end of it there too. So often what we do is we send a start bit or a start sequence and we have an end sequence and then in between we put in our data. And then with uh, our buses, we typically have a handshaking line that goes along with it, such as a clock. When the clock translates from one state to the next, then the data is actually read. It is read or, or it is put onto the bus. So we typically put the data onto the bus early and then we set the handshaking lines and then the other side can actually read it. Okay, so it's important that our machines keep synchronized with their data. Another thing that we have is what's called the transfer rate. So the transfer rate can be actually defined in two ways. Uh, frequency, uh, the amount of bits that are sent per second, or the time for each bit to be transmitted. Okay, so this is our time period here, and this is our clock frequency. So the time is equal to 1 over the frequency. So if we have 1000 Hz, then the actual time is 0 0.0001 or 1 millisecond. OK, so we can define our timing in terms of that uh, clock period or in terms of our frequency. And then when we look at the the data transfer rate, we actually take the number of bits that are transmitted in a certain time and divide it by that time. So in this case, uh, we can see uh, in this time, 1 over the time is equal to the frequency, so we can also take the number of bits times the frequency. So we can see here, if we have 16 bits transmitted at a given time, and we're running at 8 uh, megahertz, then the total transfer rate is 128 uh, megabits per second. So just watch that you that you don't get confused with megabits and megabytes. Okay, if this was bytes, then this would be a value of two, and it would change. We would end up with 16 megabytes per second, and not 128 megabits. OK, so that gives us our bytes per second, and we just divide it by 8. So let's look at the, the various different data formats that we're going to be using. So often what we do is we use a, our, our, a decimal value, and then it's difficult to represent that uh, for a computer system, so we typically use ones and zeros or, or binaries. OK, so with binary, we have 1s, 2s, 4s, and then up to 128 here. So a value of 53 is a 32, a 16, a 4, and a 1. OK, so that gives us our values. 
So it's often difficult to represent uh, uh, decimal values in binary, such as this value. So what we often do is we use a hexadecimal format. With this, we have the values of 0 to 15, which goes up to 9 and then on to F. And then the values in hex are represented with four bits. So in this case, we have a 0, a, a 2, no 4s, no 8s, so the value is 2. And this is a, a 1, that's 3 and 11. So the value there is a B. So this is 2B. OK, so they should find there's associated links with the with the page. So you should be able to, to enter some values. So the value that uh, we're looking at there is 92. And there is the value of 92 in binary. That's in hexadecimal. We can also represent an octal or even as a, as a character. Along with this, we'll be looking at some some uh, Boolean logic operations. So the main three operations that we'll look at are AND, 0, 0 gives us 0, 0, 1 gives us 0, 1, 1 gives us 1, or 0, 0 gives us 0, 0, 1 gives us 1, 1, 1 gives us 1. And uh, many times we use exclusive OR, and it's a bit like a counter, a binary counter, 0, 0 gives us 0, 0 and 1 gives us 1, and a 1 and a 0 gives us 0. So this operator here, or exclusive OR, and that's the gate that we use, uh, is used fairly extensively with inside our communication systems. We'll come back to that later. Another operation that we use is to go for, for a bit shift. So with a bit shift, we can shift uh, left, or we can shift right. So we take our bits and we move them, in this case, one place to the left, and we get this value here. Or we can use a one place to the, to the right. So in this case, the bits are moving like this. Uh, so sometimes we have what's called a rotate. With a rotate, the bit that falls off the edge, the end, comes back at the start. Okay, and then we have uh, our, our masking value. In this case, we have a value of 53. And then we mask it with a, with a 1 in this case, because we are only interested in this bit here. If we're interested with uh, the second bit, then we mask it with a 2, and, and so on. So in this case, we're taking our value, and then we ampersand it with a, with a 1 hex, and because the value is, is a 1, then we end up with a value of 1. And if this is a 4, then we mask it here with a 1. So the value that will come back in this case will be a 4. So bit masking allows us to be able to mask off certain bits within our values. OK, so here's an example here. So we can see here there is our, our value and we're we're going putting it through various masks and then we'll see what the, the value actually is. Okay, so in this case we can see if the mask is one, then we'll pick off the least significant bit uh, here. And if the value is two then we pick off this value, and this value should be reflected here. So the result that we get from a bit mask, when we bit mask with a 1, will be a value 1 or 0. When we bit mask it with a 2, the result will be a 2 or a 0. And then that way we can determine if the bit is set or not. OK, so here's an example here. Uh, so there's a value. So what we want to do is to be able to 
uh, look at each of the values and we can see there the first bit is set to a, a 1 and then a 0 and so on. So this is the small Python program uh, to actually implement that and we can see the mask is moving one bit along each time. And finally, uh, we need to look at uh, some logic gates that we might actually be used. So these are the logic gates that are used to represent the OR AND, schools of OR, and then we can also get inverse of OR and inverse of, NAND, of AND, which is NAND. So these are the associated uh, truth tables that, that we get from them. And you should find there should be a link there to be able to investigate these values okay and the last thing that we're going to look at is matrices okay so it'll become more apparent when we look at the rest of the of the module but matrices are very important when it comes to the manipulation of uh, our bits so with the matrix uh, we either get a single row that's a one by m that's a one by three in this case or we get a single column, that's an end by one, or a three by one in this case. Or we can get multiple rows and multiple columns. When we multiply our matrices together, we multiply uh, like this, that value, then multiplies that value, then multiplies that value. Okay, so we get these three values here. And then the seven multiplies that value, that value, and that value. So we get these values in here, and so on. So that's the result that we get then. An operation that we'll be using is what's called the dot product. With the dot product, that one multiplies that one, then that one multiplies that one, and then this one multiplies this one, and we get a value here. Next, we go with that one times that one times that one, gives us that, and so on. Okay, so... Uh, We'll be implementing this in in Python, so uh, NumPy is quite a good uh, a Python library to be able to implement these types of things. So let's see, we've got five five, seven, and eight, and we've got. 623 623 and then 135 135 and then 538 okay so we can use python to be able to very quickly uh, perform our calculations for us. And there we go. 30, 14, 24. 30, 14, 24 is correct. 5, 21, 40. 5, 21, 40 is correct there. And so on. And then for our dot product, 75, 55, 114, 70, 77. 77, 55, and then 14. Okay, so throughout the, the module we'll be using Python uh, to be able to implement uh, much of our code because it, it allows us to be able to uh, very quickly uh, prototype our methods. And that's been uh, an introduction uh, to, the, to the module. Okay, so it should be an associated web page there's tutorials and then there's also a Python tutorial uh, that you can complete.